today's theme, we will be styling a Shinpaku or Chinese juniper. It seems like it is a Shinpaku, but you never know. And this is uh, a field grown material, but in the, the Japanese way. It is grown in the field from a cutting, going through different nurseries and uh, it has reached a stage where it is matured. It has uh, some interesting movement that has already been done a little bit of work on it uh, at the deadwood, but as you can see, it is just a bush and we want to transform it into a future bonsai. This is really great material to start your journey with bonsai with. It is a pre-trained material, it already has a good trunk, the roots are established and you don't have to cut back very hard to get uh, something that looks like a bonsai in a few years. We will deal with the design issues as it uh, step forwards. I will take a look at the branch structure, what is interesting at this uh, specimen, what is interesting about uh, branches as they are and what have to go and how we are dealing with this. And of course also the aftercare, because you have to take care of the tree after you have pre-trained it. This is the first step in the future as a bonsai for this one. And when you're going to nurseries and buying material like this, you have to be sure that it is healthy material. You have to look after, does the roots seem all right? Is it rocking in the pot or sitting tightly? Is the foliage green and uh, growing uh, good? This has very good and strong growth, so it is the right time to begin styling this. You can find a lot of crappy material around, so take care, look out and ask some experienced people what you should buy, but never start with something that just has a, a thin trunk, because if you do that, it will never get thicker if you put it in a pot. This has been field grown and that's why the trunk is decent, have a good thickness for a showing bonsai. And you will never achieve this if you just put a stick in the pot. It will continue being a stick in the pot. So get something decent and uh, get a good start. For some reason this specimen was left on the benches. Uh, and the owner told that he has tried to sell it to other people, but they neglected it. And I have absolutely no idea why, because it's such a great specimen. It has an uh, interesting trunk. It has some uh, preformed branches that are placed well. We have to uh, define it much more than it is. It is just a bush at this moment. But why people neglect material like this, I have no idea. Normally you see these uh, junipers uh, spinned in circles and twisted around and you'll see them in hundreds. Why I like this one is because it is a little bit different. And I think whenever you're looking for material for your bonsai, try searching for something that is a little out of the ordinary. Not that it has to be uh, extravagant or, or odd or something, but just something that has its own history instead of just being one in the mass. So let's see what we can uh, bring out of this piece of material. I will analyze it when we are going forward and uh, trying to explain you why I take the choices I do when I'm working with this specimen. Often the Normal Chinese juniper is a little bit more uh, soft in the needles than the Shimpaku juniper. And I can feel this is a little more, more stiff than this one, but you can never be totally sure what variety it is. Unless you have uh, a, a clear sense of it or know the Shimpaku very well, or it is stated that it is a Shimpaku, and it is not stated from the store that this is a Shimpaku. And there are variations, so we just go with it as it is. One of the most important things to consider before you start styling a bonsai is what direction do you want to go? It is not about wanting to do a, a mama bonsai if you do not have the material for it. It is not about doing a slanting uh, slim tree like this if you do not have the material for it. What I want to uh, say with this is just that go with the flow. Take into consideration what kind of tree you have. What is the movement inside the tree, the trunk, the base and the first branches. That is something you cannot do much about unless you're having to do with a dramatic change of the tree. 
What I try to stress every time I teach bonsai is to look at your material and go with it. Do not force it into something it is not prepared for, that it is not showing in itself. Sometimes you see people trying to twist something into something odd, just to be odd, instead of going with the beauty of the tree. That is my decision when I do my tree. You can do what you want, but I try to stress Go with the soul of the tree and enhance this instead of trying to make something that may end up like something artificial. Every tree has a special character and uh, with this one it is the slanting style of the trunk and I will try to go with that. There are two sides we can choose as a front or as a back side. Let's take a look at that when I have replaced these. Bonsai is very much about your aesthetical preferences. So you have to do what you like to do and not what other people uh, tell you you have to do because there's no uh, simple solution on this. This is, has much to do, do about taste and what you maybe need for your display. This tree will be very good in a showing display on the middle shelf, maybe not on the top shelf and that is because it will have a lot of movement. Styling a shohin bonsai is also about what you need in a shohin display because shohin are displayed more than one tree together. Therefore, you, when you seek material, seek for something that you are missing. Do not uh, necessarily repeat the same tree again and again. Here I have chosen this tree simply because I need something in the display shelf with some movement. You have to have a lot of trees to choose from when you are making a shohin display, a theme we will dig into much deeper later this season. But let's start with the styling of this Shimpago. Let's try to analyze what is good and what is bad. One of the really great characteristics of uh, the Shimpago juniper or the Chinese juniper is the foliage is, uh, and the branches are easily put in position. You have some very flexible branches and you can wire these into a pretty accurate position. You can cut back to a decent size of, of needle pairs and you can very carefully thinning out this through the season, get a very precise foliage clouds all over the tree and make a very impressive impacting image of a tree in nature. The disadvantage is that the main tr trunk and the very old branches are pretty stiff and they can break if you're not careful. But with a good uh, technique and uh, a carefully skilled craftsman, you will be able to bend even these into position. What we will do today is the initial first styling of this tree. It has been grown by professionals before me. Often it is uh, so that the first step in a nursery is the people who are growing them in the ground, developing the first stages, the initial uh, shape of the tree, bending a few branches and cutting back, letting them grow, cutting back again and thereby making a basis of a tree. The next step is the nursery that probably have brought it to this stage. They develop further what the first nurserymen did and uh, try to refine a a structure of a tree and later, and that's where I come in, or professional nurseries come in, they make the final shape, they find the best of the best of this material and do the final staging of the tree. This is what I'm doing today because I can have my own influence on this material and do my own bonsai and make the style I want. Somebody before me have prepared this and that's great. So let's take the next step in the future of this bonsai. This one is grown in a clay container, but it is a cheap one. It is for training purpose only. When we take a look inside the tree, we have a very nice trunk and some movement here. We have some dead wood, but we also have some branches growing directly in the viewing direction. And we want to free that so we can see the trunk line. If we turn it to the other side, that might be the back side or the front, depending on what we choose. We have another piece of dead wood at the trunk and some nice movement and some branches in different directions. No matter what we choose, it is about finding 
the best possible view and movement in the tree. And I'm trying to analyze what I find will be the most interesting for the future. The great thing about this tree is that it has uh, two almost equally good solutions. But I have to go with one of them because uh, every bonsai has a front that is shown when you are displaying them. Uh, some bonsai are equally good from both sides, but you will need, when you're designing, to have a little bit more foliage at the back than in the front to add the depth of the tree. Therefore, it can be difficult to say that a bonsai has two fronts. Often they don't. And I have to say that I want to go with what I think was meant as the back of the tree, because uh, the uh, that wood in here has not been carved as it has at the front. And it looks like someone has thought that this would be a good solution as a front. The nebari, when we check the nebari, uh, that's the root surface. It's very important to see if the tree is well anchored in the soil. If you have uh, equal roots at both sides and they are distributed well, you can choose both sides. But often you see a bunch I have um, a fault at one side where the roots are not presented very well and therefore you choose the other side where the roots looks more natural. But here it can go to both sides. I like the movement in the trunk from both sides. It is a little bit narrow at the base that uh, is an inverse tapering but that's a fault that can look natural and you can accept this or don't. I have no problem with that, it's just a natural feature of a tree, as long as it's not uh, taking too much of the attention. What I like and why I choose one side from the other is that there is a good piece of dead wood and a, a sacrificed branch that has been grown for some time to thicken up the trunk and later cut back. This piece of, piece of dead wood is important in the design I choose. Uh, so I have to enhance this when we are beginning to style the tree. That is one of my considerations with this tree. I like to give it this uh, dramatic feeling because it's already have uh, some of it featured in the trunk. The second thing is that I can connect the deadwood piece up to the first deadwood branch. So we have a shari, that's the deadwood piece of the trunk, connected to the branch that is at the end. The first thing to do before we take the final decision is to ensure how the root surface is by removing any mosses and topsoil so we are sure how the roots are distributed. Because this can change the impression of the tree, how it starts off from the ground. That's one of the most important design issues at a bonsai. And here we have a big root that I hope I can remove or shorten later on or maybe just change the position so it's not so visible. That talks against this as the front, luckily, because I want this as the back for now. So if we change the view and clean up what I try to imagine as the front, it looks like we are pretty lucky with this because here the root distribution is much better and that means that we have this uh, odd looking a little bit too large root going uh, straight at us even if we try to bury it it will be a little bit of a problem but at the front that I hope to be the chosen one it will because here we have a perfect uh, root surface nebari going into the ground and start off the tree very well and it even eliminates some of the inverse tapering because it widened it out here. So when repotted in future it will be planted a little bit higher so we can see this uh, beauty, beautiful start of the trunk. And just a small note worth mentioning when we are at it. When you buy a tree like this, be sure it's, it's healthy. And one of the ways you can check this is, of course, looking at the foliage. Is it green? 
uh, is it having a, a, a good flush of growth? Is it dead too dead inside? It is not. There are fresh shoots in here, but we need to, more light to come in here to develop this, to get a more compact image. But the main thing is to, you can always so check the roots, are they good? Uh, the fault they have made with this one is they have not put any wire in here, so the tree can be uh, rocked rock around in the pot, it can even blow out of the pot, and that's a fault. But uh, what this leaves us with is that we can check the roots if there's healthy growing. So I can lift it out, and we have a beautiful compact root system. It needs a repotting, not this year because we are styling it, but we have fresh roots all over with white tips. This shows this tree is in a very good growing condition and it has to be repotted next year because this is too compact. But for this season, when we are doing a styling, I will not touch the root at all. They support the growth. And when we are beginning to styling and stress the tree by wiring it and uh, cutting it back, we should not also break its legs. It has to be able to walk and be healthy in the future. But it's good to see that it's a healthy specimen, so we can se securely do some uh, good styling of this tree without damaging it. What I have to do now is cleaning out a few of the branches that I'm sure I will uh, have no use for in the future design. I will also clean out any dead plant material inside where there's not light enough. And uh, let's start with that. That's the first thing we can do before uh, being able to see the full potential of this tree. This is where I need my glasses to be able to watch. And inside here we have some natural dead needles because there's not coming light enough inside. And that is one of the things we have to take care of when we are designing and taking care of a bonsai. It is to get light enough in so the growth doesn't keep expanding. But we have some a little bit weak foliage in here. We have the dead wood part here that I like to show and we have to work on this for the future but for a start it's about cleaning out any too weak and material that is in the way and to avoid fungus and insects to attack the tree we also have to clean any dead plant material that is an old bark that is a hiding place for these things. And so the first job is just to clean out. And we have the old price tag here, we can <laughs> remove that too. Some of the branches I cut out here is just because they are too thin or in the way and if they are too weak they will die off anyway and we have to remove some of them uh, being able to wire. I only remove the ones that I clearly can see is in the way so we have a cleaner structure that is easier to, to wire and put in position. Here you can see some of these weak growths that is simply in the way when I have to wire this branch and maybe this one. So we take this off and the same goes for this weak one here. It is just a thin uh, shoot and it will never develop satisfyingly. So this work is done throughout the tree and we have to maybe when I begin to wire a little bit a little more better to keep a little bit too much instead of being sorry that we have removed it later on That 
was a little more than one and a half hour of cleaning out weak branches, dead foliage and cleaning up the trunk. Branches have been cleaned out, dead material has been removed and let's take a look at what a weak branch is and a strong branch and how these are shortened and why. We have some weak branches here and a clearly much healthier branch here. So I have cleaned out many of these small uh, branches that will never tolerate being wired and they will be in the way for the strong growth that we are wiring in position. The way we are shortening these are just by removing them with a scissor and I'm not pulling any of this growth off with my fingers because I may tear the tissue down here if I remove it from here and this one will uh, dry out and be harmed by this. So I'm cutting it off instead as closely as possible to a trunk but not tearing any living tissue off. Secondly, I have to reduce the length of such a branch. I can wait with doing uh, some of it when I'm styling the tree, wiring it in position. But what I'm doing is that I am removing the longer shoot here. This is simply too strong and we need a shorter branch. So instead of pinching, that will stress the tree, I'm cutting it a little above some new growth, exactly as you would do with a deciduous tree. And then you have shortened it and we do the same thing in more detail without cutting needles, but cutting in between needles. And this way we can form a nice round pair of needles that will form the foliage pads in future. We have a much stronger view of a tree now. It is clear that there is a structure of this tree after we have cleaned out some of the dead branches and only have left what we will use for the future tree. What I have to do now is to select one or two branches that clearly has to go so they are not in the way for the new design. As decided, this is the front and this is the back. But still we have a branch, even at the back, that will be in the way. It's simply dropping uh, too low and will be a problem even when looking from the front. Because I'm going to lower some of these branches at the back and this should just be shaded out. So we will take this one off and I will cut it. I will not leave anything for a gin, a dead piece of branch, because we don't need it. That was on the back. And then at the front we have a similar branch that has to go and that is simply because I want this as the main featured branch. This is very important for the design of the tree. It is dropping down and that is difficult to see so I will just take this one off like this. This is very important because it's dropping down adds a lot of dramatic to the tree and it has this uh, break where it goes in this direction and uh, that is only caused by a branch that was previously growing here and a side shoot growing here. This one was removed and we have a nice break here, gives a natural dramatic movement. And I want to see that so we have to remove what is in the way. This main feature of the tree, the dropping branch going to the right, has to be clear. Therefore I will keep a space between that and the foliage coming uh, just above it. Uh, and I usually say you have to imagine that a bird can fly into a tree and sit on a branch. Then you have these negative spaces that are positive for the design that gives space and air to a bonsai that gives this calm feeling and uh, a peaceful image. The next thing I want to do is to add a little bit of more natural feeling to this deadwood part that has just been uh, pre-styled in a rough manner. We have to give it a little more detail so it looks more natural in the design. And I'm just using my normal tools, gin pliers and uh, concave cutters to uh, work on this and not using any power tools for this it is not necessary uh, and I think I often risk to remove more than is good with power tools and it gives a more natural look to do 
like this. If it's just done with care, it comes with experience. And also it's a choice of aesthetics, what you like. thing I want to take care of is connecting this part of the deadwood, the shari, that is called when it's a deadwood on the trunk, and connect it to this piece of gin, a deadwood piece of branch up here. And uh, I have clearly a live wean over here and here that is growing well, and uh, what is in between is dead. So this piece is absolutely dead because this is connected to this part of the dead wood. So we have to connect these parts and I will not ruin anything because the water will flow from here and from here up to the branches. You sometimes see someone wringing this around and trying to make a live wind connecting around the tree, but that's very, very dangerous. If you do not know where exactly the live wind is, then you risk killing the tree. And it comes off very easily so it's clearly dead this part of the trunk so just connecting this with this one and here we have some live wood that i will reduce a little because this is enough of the live wood over here that can support the branch up at the top. We are getting closer to the fun stuff. We have done all the cleaning, we have shortened a few branches, we still have probably too many branches left, but I try to keep as many branches as possible and wait to decide what to go after I have wired most of it. Simply because you never know if you need a branch in a certain place uh, when you're doing detailed wiring at the end of the design stage here. So keep as much as possible and only remove what is absolutely obvious. What we have done until now, the two branches and the back of the front that was in the way for the design. So what I'm doing now is I'm beginning to wire and I start with the lowest part and I wire every branch and then at last we see what kind of branch we can remove but that's a job for after the wiring. As it is clear this branch is simply too straight. It's just going uh, at the at an almost flat angle here and it's simply too straight and the rest of the tree has movement. So we have to bring in some movement in this branch to follow the design of the rest of the tree. And I need a pretty thick wire to be able to bend this. And I am connecting this wire to another branch at the back that also needs some heavy wire to position it and before I wire the smaller ones I will try to give this just a little movement. I'll do it slowly in order not to snap anything. and supporting it with my fingers all the time. Bring it a little closer to the trunk. And I think that's it. And the one at the back, 
I most likely want to put a little bit in that direction because I have another branch going down. And as you can see here, I scraped a little bit of the top bark and I would just protect it with a piece of wound paste just so it just dry out too fast. It's not a problem, I just want to be absolutely sure. Now the branch got a little bit of movement towards the front and it is lowered a little bit and has a little bit less stiff appearance than it had before. What I'm trying to do is take my offspring design-wise from the trunk how much movement there is in the trunk and in the first main branches. These have to follow each other. It's like a piece of uh, calligraphy if you have uh, some very strong strokes then you have to follow these strong strokes all through the tree like a, a formal upright tree that just have a stiff uh, trunk and they have branches like this like a, a conifer uh, on the mountainside this is also a conifer but it has this soft movement so like a calligraphy where you have these brush strokes going like this you have to follow that all through the tree from the trunk line and out in the branches make the so same flow, make the same energy flow from the bottom to the top of the tree out in the end of the branches. That makes the most harmonious design and style of a tree instead of having a straight trunk and then you have these swirling branches that are in conflict with the trunk design. So follow the flow from start to the end. To continue this work, winding all the semi-large branches because we have wired these large branches except for one and I will save that to the end and I will explain why when we reach that point. Maybe I have missed a little twig or two somewhere, but I've tried to wire everything in detail because the next thing we are doing now is to begin placing the branches. And we always start with the lowest branches to place them first because then you can lay the next branches above them. So the lowest branches are...